So collecting manure is not possible for the farmers all the time because it may not be available to each and every farmer the manure and application of manure it requires certain conditions. So some of the farmers for the easiest and the best and convenient way they are choosing the fertilizers. Fertilizers are the chemicals, synthetic chemicals which are made in the factory. Fertilizers they contain the specific nutrients say for example NPK. N stands for nitrogen, P stands for phosphorus, K stands for potassium. These three nutrients are very essential for the growth of paddy and wheat plants. They grow so tall and quickly when these fertilizers are applied. So farmers they purchase these artificial fertilizers, synthetic fertilizers or you can say chemical fertilizers. So these chemical fertilizers are sprinkled directly to the field. So by that the plants they grow rapidly. The farmers get more benefits. So that is in the green revolution the people started using fertilizers to increase the crop production. But there are certain problems, side effects by using these fertilizers. Excessive use of fertilizers will damage the crop and if you use more fertilizers, unwanted plants also may grow in large quantity. And after applying the fertilizer, if there is a rainfall, the fertilizer will be washed away to the close by water bodies and cause water pollution. So this kind of problems are there with the fertilizers. So fertilizer food is not so good in terms of uh, uh, health, you see. So people are preferring to organic foods, foods that are grown without using fertilizers, chemical pesticides and insecticides. Now, mark, now in the market there are certain foods available called organic. Organic green gram, organic black gram, organic rice, organic wheat, organic uh, atta. So what is this term organic refers to? Organic refers to that the crop is grown by very sustainable natural methods by using manures and other biotechnics, not by using the chemical and artificial fertilizers. So people are preferring to that. They are taking the choice of consuming the organic because they do not harm the health. So however, if you see from the side of farmer in the production of crop, to get a good production, you need to use fertilizer. So good quality fertilizer is used to grow the crops rapidly. In a very short time, the crops will be growing so healthy, so tall and good amount of production will be done from the by the use of this fertilizers. So you may get a doubt only these two are the choices like uh, adding a manure or a fertilizer but farmers don't they have any other choice or any other method by which they can improve the fertility of the soil of their crop. Yes, there are certain methods like crop rotation. Crop rotation. So how does this crop rotation help the farmers to improve the fertility of the soil? It can. See the farmers if they are growing first legumes in the crop, legumes. The leguminous plants, you know that the leguminous plants they contain root nodules on their roots which consist of a bacteria called rhizobium. A rhizobium. So this rhizobium it helps in adding nitrogen salts to the soil. So when the legumes are grown, large amount of nitrogen salts are fixed in the soil. Next time they don't grow the legumes, they grow the fodder crop or paddy or something else. Then it will use the nitrogen salts to grow. Again they grow the legumes. Now you see this is rotation, crop rotation. That means here they are making use of a technique, growing one plant which will add up nutrients into the soil. Next time they grow another crop which will use up the nutrients that are preserved by the previous crop. In this way, the farmers can reduce adding this manure and fertilizer from outside. This is a technique, this is a practice followed in North India. Now many of the places the people are following this crop rotation methods. That is to improve the quality of the soil without any additional efforts or adding any chemical fertilizers or manure. Manure is best always when compared to the fertilizers because when manure is added, the texture of the soil is improved. The water holding capacity of the soil is improved. 
the microbial activity of the soil is improved which is not found in the fertilizer so it is more advantageous uses of manure so farmers they have to put efforts to collect the manure and get the manure and apply it in the right time in a right proper quantity so by that the soil quality is improved overall quality of the soil is improved which is not possible by adding these artificial fertilizers right now let us see the difference between manure and fertilizer once again just we sort out the points between the manure and fertilizer and uh, we see that what are the pros and cons of uh, using both this manure and fertilizers now let us look at the differences between the fertilizer and manure at different points let us see the comparison the first thing is the fertilizer is an organic salt it is an organic salt it's a chemical it's a pure chemical a synthesized chemical made in the factories whereas the manure is the decomposing material of plant and animal matter getting decomposed animal excreta dung human excreta such kind of materials getting decomposed which are being decomposed such materials are called as manure and other one prepared in factories fertilizers are prepared in factories you might be seeing that uh, the advertisements of uh, various fertilizers so in the factory they prepare this fertilizers by chemical methods whereas manure is prepared in the fields in the field itself the manure is prepared and they make certain vermi compost to pits or sheds at which the manure is prepared and uh, does not provide any humus to the soil chemical fertilizers they do not add up any humus they do not affect the texture of the soil they do not add up any uh, humus to the soil simply the fertilizer is sprinkled the chemical is sprinkled into the soil but whereas this manure it provides a lot of humus it makes the texture of the soil great it helps the growth of microbial activity the microbial activity is increased there the natural texture of the soil is improved because of the humus which is not possible by this artificial fertilizers so at this point this is the reason why the quality of the soil is improved there so this is advised the farmers are advised to use this manure and at the other point rich in plant nutrients like npk nitrogen phosphorus potassium so these kind of nutrients are rich in the sense these nutrients are just packed as a fertilizer the directly nutrients are sprinkled so they are available to the plant in large quantity so you can see the drastic change in the growth of plants immediately they grow they shoot up because of the fertilizer right so this is the one point advantage to the farmer because he can shoot up the growth of plants at a single time by applying the fertilizer but there are many side effects that he should consider whereas the manure it is less rich in plant nutrients compared to fertilizer manures are having less nutrients compared to fertilizers but even then why farmers prefer to use manures because of course manure is less in nutrient plant in, in uh, nutrient content compared to fertilizer it has got other benefits it has got other better qualities which will improve the soil quality so the farmers they have to prefer the natural manure which is sustainable for the crop and even for the environment right so that is, those are the differences between the fertilizer and manure now let us see just once again look at the benefits of the manure so just look at the points here by this um, we can add up some more points to the manure the benefits of the manure by adding manure to the soil the water holding capacity of the soil increases the water the water whatever the water is uh, sent to the fields by irrigation the water is not simply washed off the water is held by the soil because of the manure because manure it consists of humus humus will hold the water the porosity of the soil is improved so by that more air enters into the soil and the roots get more chance for breathing and there is more microbial activity so these microbes help the plants in many ways so it improves the texture of the soil so all these are the advantages of the manure so that is the reason why farmers are advised to use manure instead of artificial fertilizers now let us see the next agricultural practice that is irrigation supplying water to the crops it is very very important 
so plants also require water to live as like animals moreover plants they contain 90% of their body is water plants cannot live without water just if you don't water the plant for one half a day or one day you see that the leaves gets dried up so water is very important for the plants for the crops to grow the water has to be supplied the water makes the soil wet so by that the plants they get good grip the soil is not dried and the water the plants they, they are in outside environment the plants are constantly exposed to hot winds the plants are constantly exposed to cold winds so likewise in different extreme climatic conditions they are exposed to so there will be more transpiration evaporation of water from their bodies so the plants they need to take up the water continuously and at the same time plants can take the nutrients from the soil only along with water so without water they cannot absorb any nutrients directly so for all these reasons water is important a plant can grow properly can flower can give fruits only when it is richly supplied with water so without water plants cannot grow and again it depends upon the season if it is summer season there will be more evaporation more transpiration so by that the more water is evaporated into the atmosphere and the plants are needed to be more and more times watered so that is the importance of the irrigation now let us see what are the various modes or methods by which the irrigation is done so there are so many traditional ways in olden days the people used to follow the traditional methods of irrigation they used to have dug wells or irrigation canals from where the water is uh, uh, mobilized to that fields nowadays all these things have gone up people are simply depending upon the dug wells bore wells so they are putting a bore they are putting fixing a pump motor which is drawing the ground water and the ground water is used for irrigation so which is very, very simple right so now let us see what are the various irrigation methods followed now let us see the methods of irrigation traditional as well as modern methods so the traditional methods if you see the first one moat chain pump dhekli rahat lever system so in all these methods the physical labor is used either the men or any animals like bulls are used to do the irrigation so mostly the water is drawn from dug wells or canals so mostly from the canals or dug wells or from ponds the water is drawn to the irrigated fields by this either moat or chain pump or dekli or rahat this is a very slow process and it needs a lot of physical labor so these are the traditional methods of irrigation whereas the modern methods of uh, irrigation you see the sprinkler system and drip system these are the two systems in which water is conserved less water is used in sprinkler system the water is drawn from either from the dug well or from the bore well and the water is sent through the pipes so these pipes will be having a sprinkler the sprinkler will sprinkle the water whereas in the drip system the water is supplied to the pipes network the pipes will be having small holes so from these holes drop by drop drop by drop water is supplied to the leaves to the roots of the plant directly so here also there is a less wastage of water so we can conserve the water with less amount of water the agriculture can be carried out so these two are the two advanced or modern methods of uh, irrigation and farmers are advised to follow these methods but here it requires the supply of electricity there is no need of physical labor here and it is a very quick and efficient process but the farmers need to have electrical supply to carry out these two modern methods of irrigation whereas the other traditional methods there is no need of electricity it requires the physical labor and it takes very long time either men or any animals like bulls are involved in this irrigation now let us uh, look at the next important practice that is protection from weeds so what are these weeds weeds are the unwanted plants so unwanted plants that grow along with our crop say for example you are growing paddy and if any unwanted plant is growing along with your paddy in your crop you call it as a weed so we want only paddy plants why these unwanted plants these unwanted plants they grow naturally because certain birds may carry the seeds of unwanted plants to our crop or before 
tilling the soil if the soil is not uh, properly removed from weeds there may be the seeds of the weeds in the soil when you sow the seeds of this paddy then along with that the weeds may grow so there are so, so many chances ways by which the seeds of weeds reach the crops but weeds are very dangerous how they are dangerous weeds will compete with the original plant say for example this is the original plant this is the weed the weed will compete in nutrient in water supply we are giving water to the crop the weeds will take up more water we are supplying fertilizers to the plant the weeds will use up the fertilizers they will cover the plant so by that the shade of the weed will fall on the plant and it will not produce proper food say if this is the plant this is the crop and this is the weed growing like this weed the shadow of the weed it falls on the crop there should be proper sunlight to carry out photosynthesis to prepare the food if the shadows are falling they cannot prepare and sometimes while harvesting if they cut the weeds along with the food crops if that is eaten by animals or humans it is dangerous because certain weeds they contain toxins poisonous substances so in such way also they are dangerous so however weeds are a big problem to the farmers so what to be done now to avoid the weeds the tilling of the soil must be done properly plowing if any weeds are there they should be crushed and whatsoever we do we should see that the weeds whatever we do removal of the weeds must be done before they start flowering after they start flowering they produce seeds if you cut also the seeds may fall in the soil and they grow again and again so the weeds can be removed by some special tool called as kurpi manually some labor is allotted there some people are allotted by giving 200 or 150 rupees per day the people will go to the field and they will pluck the weeds selectively with the help of kurpi they will cut but this is a very laborious work takes long time you need to invest more money on the people labor right some farmers they don't use this physical method they don't employ the people to cut the weed plants what do they do is they use weed side the second method is weed sides weed sides are the chemicals they will spray the chemical you may get a doubt if they spray the chemical the original plant also may die along with the weed no the weed sides are designed in such a way they will kill only the weed not the original plant say here paddy and weed if you apply the weed side the weed will die the paddy remains normal so that is in such a way the weed sides are designed but the weed sides are costly and there may be certain side effects you know that chemical application of chemicals leads to pollution and food also may get polluted so there are other kind of issues connected to this weed side but here we are discussing what are the various methods to control the weeds two methods here physical removal manual removal by employing the labor using a tool called as kurpi or manually they are plucking with their hands also in some places they will pluck with their hands also the weed sides and the agricultural scientists will do, uh, are developing certain kind of uh, tools for the farmers by running that uh, tools with iron blades in the space gap between the crop plants if any weeds are there it will be crushed like that so there are some techniques by which they will physically or manually remove the weeds the second thing is applying the chemicals like weed sides to control the weeds so the next practice is harvesting it is an important uh, practice so this is the stage at which the farmer cut the crop cut the produce collect the produce from the crop generally a cereal crop will come to maturity at a period of 3 to 4 months so after 4 months the crop is ready to cut right so this is very very important because before cutting there should not be any cyclone or rains all the efforts all the investment and everything will be wasted if there are any cyclones before harvesting so it is very important time careful time the crop is totally dried and ready to cut nothing should happen no natural calamities should happen during the time of harvesting 
so here the harvesting it include two steps they are threshing and winnowing threshing is cutting the crop it is done either by using a sickle manually farmers they employ the labor with a sickle they will cut the crop they will cut the stems dried stems so which is done manually this is called as manual threshing the process called threshing cutting or, or chaffing is called as threshing and the other one is using a combine or harvester harvester combine means it is a big machine which is having the facility to cut the crop to separate the grain from the crop directly the grain you can pack it in the bags everything it will do in one go and it will harvest acres of crops in very less time so very big farmers those who have more number of acres of land they will buy a harvester buy a combine which will do the harvesting and the second process winnowing separating the grain from the stem from the spikes both the things will be done at a time some farmers those who have few acres of land they will borrow a harvester or combine so with that they will do the harvesting farmers those do not have this they will use manual labor they employ the manual labor with the help of a sickle they will cut the crop so either of these ways the crop is cut now the crop is cut the grains are collected in bags so what to be done immediately they cannot sell it so they should store it for some time the grain has to mature completely it should be sent to the rice mills if it is rice so it should be polished even though if it is wheat it should be polished and then it will be sold to the market when they get profitable price so to do all this it takes some time where do they keep these grains if they keep them in open the environmental factors rainfall temperature everything will spoil it if they creep in, if they keep them in simply in the godowns pests there is a problem with pest rats mice they will make holes to the bags and spoil the grains so now the task is storage after harvesting the grain is to be stored properly now let us see the issues linked up with storage so here the next task is storage i already told you that once the crop is harvested the grains are to be properly stored they should be protected from moisture they should be protected from humidity from high temperature from rainfall from all these factors and moreover from the pest rice uh, sorry rats mice and other animals which will damage the grains so they make holes to the bags they will eat the grains they will spoil the grains they will litter the grains so the quality of the grains is becomes less so the farmer get less price he will get loss so to get profit the quality of the grain must be in a good condition it should be in very good quality so the farmers they need to store it well earlier they they used to farmers used to have storage bins storage bins made at their homes by using thatch and mud by using thatch and mud they used it to build up bins and some of the farmers at small scale small farmers they used to use metallic metallic bins to protect the grains from rats and other pests sometimes to protect from small worms and insects and other uh, small parasitic uh, organisms they use it to keep neem leaves neem leaves in the bins so by that they are protected from these small insects small small insects will spoil the grains beetles and certain worms neem leaves are used in large scale so this is small scale small farmers small farmers if it is on large scale large amount of grain it is stored in silos they are stored in silos or granaries on large quantity the grains are stored here silos and granaries and how they are protected here on large quantity they cannot use the neem leaves to protect from the small worms and all they use chemical treatment chemicals are sprayed sprayed 
so by all these you can understand one thing whatsoever the product of crop agricultural product either the grains either the cereals or the pulses or vegetables or fruits you must be washing them properly before you consume you tell to your mother because all these food items are sprayed with certain chemicals at either of the stages either of the growth or harvesting or storage the food items are sprayed with chemicals definitely they will harm us so we should be very careful before cooking the food items we must be properly thoroughly washing you please go to internet or refer some books in your library how to clean the fruits vegetables cereals and pulses before cooking because we are learning here that seeing here because that is in the view of getting a good production and good profit from the side of farmers at many stages they are applying the chemicals but see that at the point of uh, view from the side of consumer as you and me when we are consuming the food see that how it may affect the health so you should take care that you should be properly washing the food items cleaning the food items fruits vegetables and uh, cereals pulses you see you might be observing that your mother will wash the rice before she cooks two to three times or uh, you see that the wheat is also cleansed so this is the uh, way how we can get rid of that but it is unavoidable because we cannot avoid that it is needed otherwise there will be a loss to the farmers and they cannot grow any more crops so they go for these kind of methods in large scale silos or granaries on small scale chemicals sorry on large scale chemicals are sprayed on small scale they use neem leaves so on large scale storage silos or granaries and small scale storage they use some bins made by their own or some metallic bins are used for storage of grains so once the grains are properly stored then when there is a good price in the market then the farmer can take the grains to the market to the market yards where they sell the grains in a wholesale market that is called market yard they will take the grains to the market yard and they will sell and get a good profit so in this way they can get good crop production at the same time benefits or profit so in all these practices farmers must be having good knowledge they should take proper decisions right decisions whether to use manure or whether to use fertilizer or whether to follow this method or that method manual method or uh, using a machinery or whatsoever planning with uh, their available budgets they can get profits and they can get a good production of crop so we have uh, seen how it produce how the grains cereals fruits vegetables are produced and how many how much effort is there behind production of this food so know the importance of the food and don't waste the food because production of food is involving so many practices and at every point there is some risk we have seen so you might you must realize the importance of food you must realize the importance of agriculture you must realize the importance of the farmer who is putting his efforts money risk everything in doing that you must realize the environmental factors and their influence on the crop production so these are the various things that we should learn realize from this lesson so agricultural crop production here involves over here we have seen only about the plants from animals also there are certain products certain farmers they grow some animals to get some products like milk eggs poultry meat these all we are getting from animals this is also a part of agriculture which is called as animal husbandry what is it called as animal husbandry so this animal husbandry it includes many things poultry hens are grown for eggs and meat buffaloes and cows are grown they are reared for milk and goats and sheep are reared for wool and meat and uh, honey bees are kept for for the production of honey prawns and fishes are grown in aquaculture for the food production for the export so all this comes under this animal husbandry which we will learn in the next classes